Morning guys, my name is Kevin and this is my son Travis. Uh, we have decided to do a small series on 50cc maintenance. Uh, the type of maintenance that anybody can do that needs to needs to be able to do if they're getting into 50cc motocross. Uh, you don't have to be a mechanic, we're not going deep into the motorcycle, but just general maintenance to make the make the bike last longer and perform better. So these are our bikes. Travis point out the Husky. This is Travis's first bike. Uh, it is a 2018 model Husky. We'll be doing some cleaning on that today. And behind uh, that is his 2020 SX50, uh, which is his race bike. So for today's video, we're going to be doing a cleaning of the bike uh, and the oil change on the 50cc. Yeah. So what I've prepared right here now is just a, a small table of the type of, um, of the equipment that you're going to require. You'll need a, a plug for the exhaust, um, airbox cover, and a cloth. I'll show you what that's for. In terms of cleaners, you'll need some form of solvent, a degreaser, some kind of a bark wash, Uh, I'm a big fan of carb cleaners and also some WD-40 or similar uh, water displacement. You will need a fresh air filter and I keep a whole lot prepared, I clean them all at once, uh, once a week, I clean about five or six. Uh, you will also need a funnel and a measuring device for the oil. I'll get to that later, but you can see in there we keep keep it pretty uh, dust free and isolated from any dirt. You'll need some ATF. We use the manufacturer's recommended Motrex ATF Dextron 3 for the clutch on the 50 and obviously a decent air filter oil. We use a sumpy in which we drain all the, the oil, it takes forever to fill. Paper towel and a small toolbox like this is absolutely invaluable for, especially for small bikes like this. It's got uh, all the metric stuff you need, uh, the bits, etc. So I have this turned off at the moment. This is a floor standing fan with a basket attached and this is extremely useful for drying things. I'll turn it on quickly. It's off because it's so noisy. Yeah, so that is um, for accelerated drying of air filters, etc. Uh, a small compressor, very, very useful with an air nozzle. And that's higher pressure thing. And last but not least, we we have what is that, Trev? Um, a high pressure cleaner. A very small, very very small high pressure cleaner for uh, for cleaning the bike, but not too powerful. Great. So we are going to be washing the bike. First of all, we do some preparation. Uh, the first thing we do is remove the old air filter and uh, make sure that no water gets into the air box. Come closer. Point down here. At this. Can you see this? Yeah. So here's the air filter. You've got to be very careful here not to let any dirt fall into the air box. So carefully remove this. And here you can see all the dust from the last ride and here you have to be extremely careful uh, not to allow dirt to fall into the airbox itself. Like 
that. Travis passed me the cloth and the thing, plastic. Thank you. So this is the airbox cover that you can buy from KTM. Don't Trav, bang bumping. Uh, you stuff a cloth into the, the hole in case water gets past this to make sure that no water gets through into the carburetor. So that takes care of that. Pass me the plug, exhaust plug, please. And this is a, an exhaust plug to make sure water doesn't go into the exhaust when you clean it. Screw it in nicely like that. So before we start rinsing the bike with water, there uh, are certain places that need to be uh, cleaned with solvents first so that, so that the water doesn't dilute them later. So Travis, please pass me the carburetor cleaner. We go through bottles of this stuff. So the bikes always get quite messy around their um, carburetors. Can you see, can you see that? Um, just bang a bit of that on it. A little bit in there. You can stay that side. Uh, okay, come around there. Please. Good to keep the carbs clean. Another place where, where the bikes uh, display some requirement for this is the back fender because the fuel, when it overflows, it goes through down onto the back fender. Like that. Um, and then the exhaust area here, where it's, uh, sometimes a lot of carbon comes out. And that's about it for the uh, carburetor cleaner. Cool. So the, the air, air filter holder also requires some uh, treatment from the carb cleaner or a similar solvent. As you can see, it gets quite patchy. Travis is going to spray in your eyes, boy. And what this does is just it gets rid of some of that the dirty air filter oil, uh, which is now sort of dissolving away, and we'll leave that one side for now. Okay, before we we clean, uh, well, the first thing we can do is rinse with water before we use the high pressure cleaner. But I'm going to just use this as a pointer to show you which areas to avoid spraying water at, a lot of water at. The front of the bike, in there, you'll see there's wheel bearings. You can't really see them, but that's a wheel bearing area. Moving around this way. Here. Head bearings. Don't need a lot of water. The controls, the kill button. Be careful with that. Now, especially here, the carburetor. If you look underneath the carb you'll see that this whole thing is not very waterproof so water can get into the carb if you high pressure clean it too much this box will get to later it always gets water in here and that's where your stator lives and it needs to be cleaned out periodically the back of the bike the back of the bike in there there's also bearings so if you sit here and spray high, water, high pressure water into the bearings you're going to be replacing bearings a great deal uh, and then on this side, you obviously you need to be extremely careful of spraying too much water, even if you have a plug. Uh, you don't want any water in there. And limit the amount of high pressure water in this area because you do definitely not require water to go into the airbox. So that's about it. I think we're going to proceed now with a simple rinse first. I haven't got the water on too much of a jet. You're just really trying to loosen the, the dirt off the bike before we give it a proper clean. Trav, let's see what you got there. Yes, it's a bike cleaner. Proceed.
Travis is going to just give it a general spray over and then he's going to concentrate on the engine parts and the exhaust. Travis is going to come around this side and spray underneath. Now that's where the oil changing bolt is, so we have to make sure it's really clean under there. Right, thank you. So while we're waiting for the prep sole to soak in, we're going to clean the chain. Now this chain isn't particularly dirty, but I figured we may as well just show you how to how I clean a chain because uh, they can get pretty grimy after race meetings. Okay. So what I have in here is some used solvent. The solvent's pretty expensive. So once it's cleaned air filters and so on, we, we contain it and we put it into a spray bottle like this for use on things like chains, sort of uh, recycling. I keep, I keep something like this underneath to try and catch as much of the solvent as possible. Okay. Yes, you can turn it. Faster. Get a brush like this. This is an Oxford brush, chain cleaning brush. It's a little bit big for a little bike like this, but uh, looks like this chain needs adjustment. So we will do that later as well. These 50cc chains, they stretch for nothing. Almost after every second or third ride, you need to look at adjusting the chain. So we're just working the solvent into the chain now. It is water soluble, so um, it doesn't form grease everywhere. Greasy marks. Okay, that's it. Doesn't look like much, but you'll see later how it cleans up. Okay, so any any waste products uh, we we put into the sumpy and later on dispose of it properly. So this was the solvent left over from the chain uh, cleaning. We just put it in there and let it slowly but surely drain out. Right, let's go clean the bike. Right, we're about to start the high pressure cleaning. Once again, this bike wasn't particularly dirty, it wasn't a very muddy day that we last rode. But it's a good idea to clean the bike properly every single time uh, it gets used. Uh, it helps you check, check over the bike for loose nuts and bolts and things that might have gone wrong, adjusting the chain, etc. So, start with the seat. Okay, now we're high pressure cleaning, I would suggest that the adult takes care of this because the kids tend to fixate on things like stickers and other weird things and not at the actual bike itself. Usually the dirtiest parts of the bike are under the fenders um, and under the engine itself and the exhaust. Uh, the radiators, if it's been very muddy, uh, can get blocked up and that's very important to keep them clear. I use a very small uh, low power high pressure cleaner so that you can't do any serious damage and the chance of water ingression is, is reduced. You can see I'm going with quick swift movements like that, especially over the areas where I said were sensitive. the fork guards. The tires are muddy, you can clean them too. Let's show you how.
Motocross chains don't have O-rings or Z-rings, so you can high pressure clean the, the chain as well, they're not going to damage it. Avoid the carburetor area as much as, much as possible. Pick once over. Nervous, come turn the back wheel. This little thing here gets a lot of mud in it, usually. You often get a lot of mud in them and you can't see it from this angle but foot pegs get a lot of mud in them now i'm about to do the radiators from a distance one on each side so i've avoided putting too much Water in the electronics as well as the throttle body. Avoided the airbox area as much as possible, the carburetor area as much as possible. So that's it, we can uh, let it dry. Okay, so while we're waiting for the bike to dry, we're just going to look at the chain. This is way too slack, it should be, it should be like there somewhere. Okay, so what you need is a size 19. 18. 19, thanks Travis, and a 13. Okay. And what we need to do is effectively move the wheel back, which will make the, the chain a little bit tighter. So take your 19. And you loosen the axle nut. Just a little. And this, and then when you tighten these in, pulls the wheel back. Got to try and keep both sides of the axle the same on the swing arm. So there it's given it approximately come on this one, a turn. And if you look carefully, you might see the nut moving slightly back. Come around this side again. And you'll have seen with that slight adjustment that I've made, it's much, much better. Far less loose. So what we do now, we tighten up the nuts. And some people do this. Puts good tension on the, on the nuts. Tighten it good, and then you tighten your lock nuts, and the same on this side. And there we take this out. There you have a chain that's tighter, running true. Okay, so here we have the seat and the airbox cover. I've just given this a scrub. Uh, I'm going to dry it with the uh, compressor, but you can let it dry normally if you've got time. And I'm gonna put the seat in front of my fan. Now, just a, a note on the seat, is this section of the seat here is actually at the top of the air box. So you need to make sure that this is kept clean and dust free. This is gonna dry the, the seat. Now I'm gonna dry the air box cover. Okay, we have now washed the bike. It's pretty much dry, dried on its own. But before we go and change the oil, we want to make sure that uh, there's no moisture inside the engine from the washing. So we're going to start the bike outside and run it for a bit to also warm up the transmission oil slightly uh, and, and to get ready for the oil change. First thing we do is we take that out. Come closer, Trav. 
come much closer to you. And we're going to remove carefully remove the airbox cleaning cover like that and the cloth inside. We'll cover air, air filter cleaning at another stage. Come Trev, come here clutch. Okay, you can see the hole that it needs to cover. Put it in neatly. Make sure that it's seated properly. And you take the airbox cover and clip it in very, very carefully like that. Okay, stop. Okay, thanks to my cameraman Travis for doing such a good job. We're now going to start the bike. Uh, just to warm it up a bit before the oil change and to try and get any oil out of the uh, water out of the engine they might have got in from uh, from the washing process. Takes about two or three minutes to warm up. We're going to do the oil change. And you have to do an oil change on these bikes every um, two hours. Yeah. Right, we're prepared now for the oil change and this is what we, we have in readiness for that. Paper towel, socket set for the 13, size 13. We have the sumpy underneath waiting for the oil. Uh, and we have Travis on this side who's going to take the filler cap off and put it down safely. That's very important to do because sometimes you might get distracted and halfway through an oil change you might forget to put oil in. Okay, so there is the oil sump uh, drain plug. It's a size 13 metric. It doesn't have to be super tight because it's not holding anything in. So please don't over tighten it when you do re tighten it. It was actually a bit tight. It's got a washer, which a brass uh, or copper washer, which uh, you must try to avoid having fallen to your sumpy. Uh, usually, I'll just get a piece of paper. Give me a little piece. We put a little, a little piece of paper over the sumpy hole, just in case the washer decides to fall in. Okay, so let's go. At a certain point, it becomes quite loose, and if you quite depth, you can just get your finger in there and pull. And what we have here, leave it, leave it, leave it, leave it on the final. You'll see there's some black residue on there, and a lot of that is magnetic bits that come off the clutch. So, this is after two hours. Every two hours, you're going to be changing the oil. Fortunately, it only takes 200 milliliters of Motrex, so that's not awfully expensive considering the prolonged engine life. Uh, this is busy uh, cleaning the magnetic residue of the magnetic uh, Okay, it's going to clean it some more than that So what I'm going to do now is show you that if you tilt the bike like this a lot more comes out. Okay, stop. Okay, so this happens a lot after every ride, so you get very, very used to it. Uh, what we're going to do is just Block off the sun piece so that uh, the bolt doesn't fall in there. We're pretty much done with that. And now we get the magnetic nut back in. Careful not to cross thread it. Goes on really easy. And as I said before, 
don't over tighten it right so here we have the original stator that came in this bike and you can see how rusted it is this was before I knew how to look after a stator and these are like a thousand rand or something like that and when these go wrong the bike just it just stops or doesn't rev out this is located inside this housing here Wait. so for the stator job we need a size 8 it needs to be really thin to be able to get to those three bolts we also need carburetor cleaner and uh, WD-40 water displacement 40 one of my favorites and uh, some compressed air ideally okay so don't stop the video let's get those loose These two are longer. That is a short one because it's near the head. Dad, can I do one? Can I? Yeah, you can do the top one. Travis is going to help me with the top one. Okay. Okay, so the stator just comes off, and this was cleaned just after the last ride, so it's not dirty at all. But normally, a lot of grime sits down there, um, and this is where the rust can occur because water gets in through this little pipe here and the, the seal on this thing is extremely inadequate but not a problem if you just maintain it so what we do is we get carb cleaner give it a bit of a clean out like that and this we get some compressed air Okay, so the compressor stopped now. We've uh, cleaned it with uh, with our cleaner, and now we're just going to put some WD-40 in and spray that slightly as well. Uh, and we're good to go with no corrosion. Hopefully, there for a while. Yeah, just hang on. Wait. Don't forget, that's the short bolt, and these are the longer bolts. Done this a million times. Now you see, we still haven't put the oil in, so that's why it's a good idea to have the oil filler cap off to remind you you still need to put your oil in. Good, while I'm here, just take some WD-40 and you spray it on the pet cock. These things are famous for, uh, for seizing and you run it up and down a bit. So Travis is going to be uh, showing us how to uh, fill up the bike with oil. But I just want to show you our jug that we have here. Uh, it's 200 mils. It's quite difficult to read. So what I did was I put a piece of black tape at the 200 mil mark. So it's easy. Perfect.
right, we're going to put the oil in now. 200 milliliters, all they take. Travis is going to hold it there for a while to get every last drop out. Okay. Goes in there, show them where we store that, Trav. Goes into a dust proof container. And it's used just for our Motrex. For the 50s. Right, so there we have the 50cc oil change. Hi guys, uh, it's Kevin on 50cc maintenance. Today we're going to be doing a spark plug change on the 50. It's, uh, it's up to you, but recommended that you change one, a spark plug every 10 hours. Uh, so for that you need the following tools. So for some reason it seems to be a size 16 spanner and this is the spark plug replacement that you will get from NGK. Um, it is a L LR8B. LR8B and you should carry a couple of them in your toolbox, uh, especially when you go to the races. Thanks again to Travis for holding the, the, the camera, he has our new plug. I'm going to get the old one out first. It was very loose. It was not very tight at all. Uh, so first you have to pop the plastic top off. Like that. Spark plug cover comes off. Get it out of the way. Obviously, you want to be doing this when the engine's cold. Come up slightly, Travis, so we can see it in there. Sounds good. We're running it easy. Helps to have little, little fingers. Another extremely good reason to have the bike clean before you do this is so that uh, you don't pop dirt into the spark plug. Let's have a look at the old one. Thank you, Travis. Swap it down. So there's the old plug. Right, so we're just fitting the new spark plug right now. They do seem to vibrate loose from all the from all the high frequency vibrations that these bikes produce. So you might want to just keep an eye on that. Mine was incredibly loose. Um, there. Okay, Trish, come on this side. Thanks again to Travis for our camera work. Uh, here I've got some switch cleaner. I've just noticed that the the spark plug cap is quite dirty uh, and probably quite dirty inside. So I'm just going to give it a bit of a, a clean up. Okay, so we're going to put the spark plug cap back on and then after that show you a couple of lubrication Let me make sure it clips well a couple of lubrication points uh, on, the, on the bike that you need to do Okay, here are a few points, places that you need to lubricate after cleaning just a bit of WD-40 on the foot pegs on the kickstart which are known to freeze up with grit. Um, I've done the fuel tap already and then the, it's just the other foot peg. So one of the tips that our coach taught us only uh, after Travis lost his seat uh, in the middle of uh, practice, the, these buckles over here can come loose in a, in a fall and the next thing you know the seat falls off in the middle of a race exposing the air filter. So what we do, we get some good uh, duct tape and before a practice or a race, especially a race, put that across the seat like that, which minimizes the chance of that clip coming loose and the seat falling off in the middle of a race. 
Okay, so now we're going to do uh, chain lubrication. Uh, use whatever you like. I'll just use whatever I have available at the time to lube the chain. It's a bit tricky with the 50 because you've got to roll it on like that. Makes a hang of a mess. And then you just uh, quickly wipe it up with paper towel. Just wipe the excess off here, it's going to get dirty. You're going to have to clean it properly after. At least the chain has got a good, sounding good, nicely lubed up. Okay.